the albatross is often used as the sign of hope that there is a destination that we're going to find. You're with your family fishing on the beach. You look down in the surf and you see there's something struggling down there and it looks like it's really in trouble. You go down and see if you can help. The albatross is the most majestic of our seabirds. It's the one that you look up at and just feel aroha for. The bird was found by a member of the public um, kind of being pounded in the surf. This bird was a southern royal albatross. An endangered species native to New Zealand with a three metre wingspan, the world's largest flying bird. Ko hukurangi tukumanga, ko waipu tukuawa, ko nāti parau tuku iwi, ko tikapa tuku marae. Each iwi has their own relationship to Toro. Each iwi will have its own reasons for why that particular manu is sacred. But I think for all of us we recognise the majesty of such a large bird that can travel for thousands of miles. You know, it's a bird that's used to being in solitude in the open ocean and suddenly it's sitting in the back of a car in a box. Being driven two hours south of Napier to an animal sanctuary. The vets didn't know what was wrong with it. Um, I don't think it was vomiting or vocalising or anything like that. Um, and no obvious external wounds. Staff kept it warm, gave it fluids, but despite their best efforts, it died. How long did it last? Oh, less than three days. Yeah, sometimes you just have to set aside a little bit of that emotion. Likely born on Campbell Island, this three or four year old male Toroa could have lived for 60 years. He'd probably just flown back solo from South America, coming home to find a partner. Just the sheer amount of travel that the bird's going to miss out on and getting a, a mate for life as well. So it does make it very sad. Opened up the stomach and yeah, it was presented with this 500 mil plastic bottle. It's not a quick death. Um, you know, they don't just swallow the bottle and then the bird dies. You know, the bird can't eat properly because it's got this big plastic bottle in its stomach. It's causing, you know, uncomfortableness, a degree of pain. Um, and so the bird just slowly sort of starves. I felt a deep sadness when I heard about that story because it's just so needless. You just think it's a waste, isn't it? It shouldn't have happened. Humans shouldn't be contributing plastic into the ocean environment. The global stats are chilling. Nine out of ten seabirds have eaten plastic. Eight million metric tonnes of plastic make it into the oceans every year, a dump truck a minute. You have to wonder how many other birds is this happening to in the ocean that we never get to see. Graham reckons the albatross mistook the floating drink bottle for a squid. And they just dive in, stick it into their mouth, swallow it, not even think twice about it, carry on flying. Plenty to choose from. Kiwi drinks companies sell an estimated one billion plastic bottles a year. Recycling's not working, so many find their way into the sea. It's a symbol of human ignorance. It's a, a symbol of our selfishness. You need to get the manufacturers to realise that there's a responsibility for the whole cycle of the product that they develop. These things can be around for hundreds of years. We have to put it back at the doorstep of the producers. We're calling on our government to make New Zealand the first country in the world to ban single-use plastic drink bottles. We can't just put our sustenance first. It's the great mistake of humans as we put ourselves first and we forget that every other living creature on this planet has a right to a clean environment. That's on us. <laughs>